This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Sorry about the uh, technical uh, issues, but uh, hopefully those have been resolved. And so let's get to the market, sir. Right now, you can see you got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's off 590, S&P's off 93, NASDAQ 100's on 359. That's 2.6 percent. The big uh, percentage loser is the semis are off three and a half percent, 115 points. You've got gold trading up 28 bucks, 1994 is the print there. Silver's off seven cents. Slice we crude is up five dollars and fifty four cents. She's trading out at one twenty one twenty three. So just to, you know, kind of an overview, I think, of where the markets are at. Uh, let's just start by taking a look at the uh, index ETFs out here. So everybody can do this if you've got some charting uh, software out here. And I'm just taking a look at the SPIs, upper left, the Qs, upper right, the Dow Diamonds in the lower right, and the Dow, uh, the uh, Russell 2000 in the uh, lower right out here. And what we can see here is that each of them are trading back into their swing points. So the swing points from February the 24th. Now, in the case of the SPIs, the upper left-hand panel, if it closes today below 428.76, even though it will be on light volume. So, so far we are, what, four hours into trading? Yeah, four hours into trading, and you've done 68 million shares versus that swing point has volume of 213 million shares. When you close inside a swing point with light volume, you may or may not go test the uh, bottom of that swing point. When you test inside a swing point with volume, it gives you a higher probability that you'll do that. So at this stage here, what we have to the only thing I can come up with, uh, well, what, well, I guess there's one other thing I maybe I can come up with. If you give me a moment here, Maybe I can do this. I just uh, see if I can add the profiles quickly. I don't know. Yeah, let's see here. So as we take a look at the spies now, okay, well, here. So this helps us. So now when we take a look at the spy, so we know that we're pulling back with light volume. So I'm just pulling this over to the left. And what it's pulling back into is actually the bottom of its bullish structured profile. So that level is 421.86. The low today so far is 422.04. So here's what you can do or here's what you should do. If you see a close below 421.86, then I think the probability is increased. That price is going to go test that 410.64 level. If support holds and on lighter volume, well, then we could just see, uh, then, 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 you, then you have, not that you've got a bottom, but you've got a key level of support that will have held. Let's do the same thing here for the Qs, see if they're doing anything similar. So we're going to turn on their market profiles as well. And in their case, we can see that the Qs are actually testing also a bullish structured profile. And price is it's just below the bottom of the profile. So bottom of the Q profile, QQQ, is 329.91. We're trading at 329.11 right now. So it's really testing that level. On light volume, the volume here in the Q so far with four hours of trading, 53 million versus 130 million. So if, if price closes below the bottom of the profile because it's bullish in structure, likely sets up that chance of uh, price going and testing, maybe b busting out. But at least testing 318.26. Let's do the same thing here with the Dow Diamonds. So this is helpful to us. If we take a look at the Dow Diamonds, we can see that it too is test its bull structured profile. Price is trading just below the support level. The support level here, write this down, 331.11. We're trading right now at 330.48. So if price closes the day below 331.11, it will be on lighter volume. The volume on that swing point is 14.1 million shares. Today's volume so far is 3.3 million shares. But a close below, again, 331.11, likely sets up a move to at least the 322.69 area. So let's finish this off by looking at the uh, Russell 2000. Give me a moment here. We'll get that populated. And the Russell 2000, its support area from a profile standpoint. Now, this is a bearish structured profile. And that says the level of support to be watching would be 193.93. Now, the volume on that swing point is 52 million shares. We're pulling back so far today on 23 million shares. We're already four hours of elapsed inside the trading session. So definitely late volume. But you want to use those swing point, not the swing point, the, the bottom of those profile levels as your guide as to what the intent of price is doing. Because if, if support holds then it's not a certainty just yet that price is going to go down and test out those uh, swing points. So that's what we have. We take a look at those swing points. If you take a look at the indices out here, which I can't apply profiles to, let's get this screen populated or try to. Here we take a look at the indices. In the upper left, you've got the Dow. You can see it's trading inside that February 24 swing point. So too is the S&P, which opens up the door to test the bottom. That would be the uh, uh, 32, 272, the 41, 114, and the S&P. And the NASDAQ 100 would be 13065. But let's keep in mind, there's some 
support levels on those index ETFs as well. Now, the semis, they're having the worst day. And the semis right now are trading below. Well, they're trading below. Its swing point is really still from January the 28th. Because on the 24th, price never got down to totally test that swing point from January 28th out there. So really, it is that January 28th level that you're watching. It closed below 31.47.48. We're trading below that right now. We're at 3140. That's going to suggest lower price. Now, the question is, question that is, what are the SMHs doing from a volume standpoint? So let's get over to our three time frame charts out here, SMH, and uh, get a get a moment for this to populate. Okay. So the well, so that's interesting. Okay. So because of dividends and everything, so the SMHs have a slightly different swing point. Uh, in fact, well, they, they have the swing point out here as being February 24th versus the January 28th level. <clears throat> Let's just do it like this. January the 28th, the volume there was 10 million, 11 million shares. We're only at 4.6, so that's light volume. And volume here on the, uh, Jan on the February 24th was 11 million shares as well. So you got a light volume test, but still close and below those areas suggest lower price. Now, you'd say lower price to where? That's a great question. I hope everybody can see the SMH charts out here. I don't know if you can or not. I'm just getting used to this system out here. Um, but the so the next level, so we can see on a monthly time frame here, is that uh, price is right at the point of control, the center of its bullish structured monthly profile. Now, on a monthly basis, you know, we're, uh, this is where buyers and sellers believe there's fair value. The fair value is between 234.31 and 264. The stream has ended. Whoa. Okay. Uh, let's try this again. Share screen. Screen. Okay. Screen two. Go live. Okay. Uh, hopefully you've got that back. And uh, mm, yes, okay, great. So uh, so right now you can see that on month. So the next downside target would have to be 234.31. That is the bottom of the monthly bullish structured profile. So that's in the SMHs out there. And we probably get a decent message for regard to what the rest of the markets are going to do as to the SMHs. So if price holds and closes back above the support level, Boy, for the SMHs, I would say that's the, so the the safe the safe level would be a close above the low from January 28th, and that's at 249.36. So if price can close above that, then what you're going to have is rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. That may just suggest a bounce up to the 260 uh, level out here. But what we can say, at least at this stage, at 1:37 in the afternoon, as we took a look at the index ETS, as we take a look at the the ETF. For the indice that's performing the worst, it's still on light volume. Okay, so where do we go to next out here? Um, where do we go to next out here? Let's go take a look at uh, go. Oh, you know, I tell you what, I'm going to go take a look at gold here real quickly. There are a couple of requests that came in, so I want to be able to get to those. If we take a look at what Goldilocks is doing. Let's try to get this populated. So here, gold is really taking on a key weekly swing point. And that's the uh, upper right-hand chart. And the swing point was from the time period, the week that began, November 9, 2020. A close today, certainly a close on Friday, above 1987.80, that's going to suggest a uh, move much higher. That move much well. Uh, yeah, that's going to suggest a move back to its all-time high. So that's really the, the last resistance level that I see at this point in time when it comes to the uh, gold contract. So it's the 1987.80 level. We trade in 1997.40. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. 
LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our uh, first question out here. This is from Michael P. He wants to take a look at two different instruments, uh, Rivian. RIVN is the uh, first one, and uh, Moderna. Um, he's got some puts in this. And his question is, where are where's price headed to? So in the case of Rivian, you're at um, a new all-time low out here. Uh, so we don't have a lot of uh, data to be able to identify. So there's no profiles or anything to assist us with where price might be going. Really not um, an A to B equals CD. I mean, there's a number of them here. But what, what I've done here, Mike, just to give you a feel for where price might be headed to, is I'm just looking at the expansion of the last set of swing points in the daily time frame. That means I'm using the low from January 28th. That's at uh, $50, even Stephen. And then I'm using the high from uh, February the 1st. And that's out at the 7146 level. If we take the Fibonacci expansion of that, there's two expansion levels I'd be looking at, the 1.272. That gets us to 4416. Price so far today has gotten down to 44.45. So that is your first price target. The next price target, that would be if price closed below 44.16. Mike, I'm not saying that it has to do that today. I'm saying that a close below that. In fact, until there's a bullish reversal candle, our assumptions would be that price would go to the next level. That next level would be 36.74. That's what you're looking for to get down to the 40 level. So I'd be watching 44.16 out here. And if you get a close below that, it opens up the idea that it should get down into the 36.74. The second request was to take a look at Moderna. MRNA is the ticker symbol. So let's let this thing get populated. And in the case of Moderna, it is trading below right now the bottom of its bullish structure, slightly bullish structure daily profile. That was at 136.55. It's trading below, and it has been trading below for the last month, the bottom of its weekly profile. Now, you only see two lines on the weekly profile. That's because in this instance, the center 
is located right where the bottom of that profile is. Now, that's really important because you know that you had all kinds of buyers lined up there. That's at 156.48. Once price broke through that four weeks ago, what we can see is old support became resistance. Last week, the week before, price got up there, rejected that level. So that says lower price. The problem is that when we come here, we take like a Moderna on a monthly basis. It closed last month below the bottom of its profile. It too had a double, a doble gi. That means it just simply had both the center and the bottom were at the same level. That's at this 155.36 level. So it's headed lower. So the question is, is there any other patterns out here? So let's pull over the white background charts to assist us, try to assist us at least. And on a daily basis, what you'd be looking for here uh, Mike, is if you did generate, if this did generate a bullish reversal candle, that would give you an indication that price should go back up and perhaps test the uh, bottom of that daily profile, 136.55, above that 144.20, above that 154.20, which has really been the resistance, top of that profile. But if we don't get a bullish reversal candle, price should continue to head lower. I don't really have a price target per se, but let's look at the weekly chart, see if there's any breakout levels. Well, yeah, price actually, Moderna's headed much lower. Or this is what the chart would communicate to you and I. Why is that, Steve-O? Because this formed a TD9 count bottom on February, the week of February 25th. And uh, price right now is trading below that. So, look, it's only Monday. But a close below the bottom of that uh, uh, of that TD9 count pattern, that is 134, even Steven, or 130. Then what that does, Mike, it suggests that over time, this is a weekly chart, that price would get back to the 1830 level to target it. So it has blown through or appears to be blowing through a weekly TD9 count bottom. Of course, we won't know the answer to that question until Friday, but right now we go with the information that we've got. And even on the monthly chart, this suggests that price could pull back to 1353. So here's how I could summarize it for you. We do not have any kind of a bottom signal with regard to Moderna on the daily time frame, and this suggests that it will head lower. So thanks so much for being patient and waiting. I do hope that helps you out. Thank, but thanks, so, thanks so much for writing in. The next question question coming in from uh, Hector and Hector and Patty Hector's message is a uh, XOM and CVX are these valid A to B equals CD up on a yearly basis on a yearly basis years in 2002 and 2003 as a swing point well let me uh, let's do this here let's pull over Exxon Mobil. so you want to take a look at Exxon Mobil and CVX so here we're going to look at the yearly chart I'll pull up the yearly for Exxon Mobil. And you want to go back to 2002, 2003. Well, the answer to your question is, even if you were to use that, I'll draw an arrow to where it is that uh, Hector and Patty are looking at. They should be looking at, at this level right here. Let me get my cursor out here. And uh, that would be, let me make sure that we're, we're all looking at the same thing out here. And yeah, that's the 2002. Now, Hector, there's no way to to know if this is an A to B equals CD on a yearly basis because price would have to take out the swing point. And that's really the area that we would want to focus on. The swing point here is the all-time high from 2014. So even though you might want to use that as a A point for a yearly A to B equals CD, uh, I can't say whether this is going to turn into one or not. And I don't really need to. What I can share with you is on a yearly basis with regard to profile levels, $95 even Steven is the place where you could find some yearly resistance. On a uh, back to the yearly chart, now we're trading well above last year's high. So this is a very bullish uh, instrument. You already know that. You didn't need me to tell you that. On a monthly time frame here for ExxonMobil, you're only in bar number seven. This suggests uh, that this is going to target 100.43, the weekly time frame chart. Now, you can find A to B equals CD patterns on these other time frames weekly, but that wasn't really what your question was. On a weekly basis, as long as price closed above last week's high, last week's high was a TD9 count, then you've got higher price coming at you. So any close this week above 84.28 says you have a strong momentum to move to the upside. The daily time frame, you're in bar number seven. This does say that you could get a short-term top between tomorrow, Tuesday, and Thursday should the TD9 count pattern develop. So in the case of ExxonMobil, do I see this as a yearly A to B equals CD to the upside? The answer is no. Now, what I'll do is I'll get this chart. I'm doing it off screen, populated, and we'll bring up the uh, the other, again, the same thing out here. I don't believe CBX is trading above its all-time high, but we'll find out here shortly. Let's not make that assumption. Uh, shoot, CBS, that's not what I wanted. CBX is the ticker symbol. Okay, the white background charts have populated. So let me pull those over here. And again, uh, go to the yearly chart first. The yearly chart shows us what? 
So the okay, I take that back. So the yearly chart in CBX says you are at new all time highs. So now the question is, uh, is this an A to B equals CDT upside? It could be. Absolutely. It could be. And that's using the 2003 low out there. Uh, let me populate this, see if there's anything else that uh, pops out at us. Well, what pops out at us is wave number seven that you're in, but it's a yearly chart. So I right now wouldn't get too focused on a yearly chart for developing really where price might be targeting. And I'd have to I think you're better off using shorter term time frame charts and kind of watching the play by play on a monthly basis. So everything looks very bullish still on a weekly basis. Uh, everything looks uh, very bullish. What I mean by that is this uh, negated a TD9 count top two weeks ago. So that tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside in it. And on the daily time frame, well, the daily time frame says, hold your horses out here, Hector. And uh, that says that today is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. Also going to be, well, we're also in wave number seven, that's letter G. Now, for that to confirm, you have to have a lower high tomorrow. Uh, for the TD9 count to confirm, well, that might not be completed until tomorrow. But Remember, we're in strong momentum moves to the upside. Let's say we get this TD9 count high tomorrow. Maybe it's the side. The price closes above whichever high it is. It tells you again about a very strong momentum move to the upside. So Hector and Patty, I hope that helps you out with regard to CBX and uh, ExxonMobil. CBX, yeah, it could be a yearly A to B equals CD to the upside, but I would pay attention more to the daily weekly monthly. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, 
folks. Hey, my apologies about the first half hour of the uh, show there. We're dealing with some technical issues as we migrate over to a better uh, application here for us. Uh, so let's do this here. We've got about two minutes left. We'll try to do the play-by-play -play on a short-term basis. We're looking at the 30-minute uh, charts for the equity future contracts out here. Now, if you take a look at them, two of them actually have potential bottoming patterns. What I mean by that is the NQ is right now forming bar number nine. But eight was the lowest bar so far. Actually, it looks like we've got a lower bar here in uh, bar number nine. So we're we're going to get a TD nine count bottom, or we should by six by six by uh, by two p.m. That is as and, and price need would need to close below. It looks like that's a likely thing. As long as price closes below, well, why can't I get the uh, figure? There we go. Uh, 13, 557.50, you'll have a valid TD9 count. So that's going to be a bottom signal inside the NQ. Now, that may just mean that it's a very small relief rally up to that oscillator and change line. But that's the target, 13,549. We can see that every rally, not as a result of a bottom signal, but every rally that we've seen here for the last several hours, that is where price is running resistance. Now, that level is 13,550. If price closed above 13,550, you would expect an anticipation to move up to 13,661. And actually, the counter trend move would really end at 13,754 because that was a bullish structured profile out there. Now, if you look in the uh, left hand panel, so both the ES and the ENQ are the only ones that have the TD9 count bottom signal. You'll see TD9 counts on the Dow, YM, and the Russell 2000, but so far their lows are not on bars eight. Nine or the bar following nine, which is yet to, which is yet to take place. So in the case of the ES Mini, it too should target its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed about 42.48. Now, if price is able to take that level out, then you could expect and anticipate a move up to 42.77. Uh, with regard to the Dow, what this needs by 2:30 is to make a lower low than what we've already seen today. And in the case of the uh, in the case of the Russell 2000, it just needs to make a uh, low below the low of the last candle session. Hey, folks, stay tuned for two more great hours. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magnificent Monday. Thanks so much for joining us.